Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Turn to discuss further into calculus with parametric curves and now look at arc length and go part one of this uh, video series. And uh, basically, arc length is just the length of the curve I've gone over many times before, and you can see those in my earlier videos in the links in the description below. But now we're going to look at it in parametric uh, form, which is quite interesting. So let's look at arc length. So, so recall from my earlier video that the length of a curve C in the form Y equals F of X, and where X is between A and B, where F prime is continuous, where again it just states that the F is continuous as well, is uh, and the derivative exists is given by the formula. And again, make sure to watch my earlier video on this. Just to recap, this is equal to L. The arc length is equal to integral from A to B of uh, square root one plus, and then the derivative dy over dx squared. Move this plus to look a bit nicer, and then we have uh, dx over here, like that. And then what this is uh, describing is if you had a curve, we'll go x. This is y, and we have a curve C like that, and then we have it from here to there, and at this point is A, at this point is B, and this curve is a y equals f of x, and we'll call this curve C, and now, so we have something like this, the arc length is basically this distance across, that entire distance all the way up to there, that's just L, like that. So now let's suppose that uh, this L, I mean, or this uh, curve C can be written by parametric equations. So suppose that C can also be written or described by the parametric equations, and we'll, here we'll write x equals 2, f of t, or function of t, and y is equal to g of t, another function of t, and then we're going to define t as between beta there on the right side, and then it's uh, greater than or equal to alpha like that and here we're going to impose where where we have uh, dx over dt or the derivative of uh, the x or which is just f prime of t and we're going to impose that it's greater than zero and the reason is because this is the x formula so as t increases from left to right you're increasing in size if the derivative in terms of uh, dx in terms of dt is increasing this means that well, x is increasing, so i.e. Uh, x is always increasing. So when it's always increasing, we don't go back and forth, and uh, we only go over this curve once. So in a parametric form, what ends up happening is the x is always increasing, so we're again, we're increasing from, from a all the way to b. So that's what, what we want from our x variable to match along with this regular y equals capital F of x uh, type of function. And again, this means that C is traversed once, so we don't go back and forth, because that's what you could do with parametric equations. You can go back and forth on the same curve, depending on the, uh, on the values for T. So from left to right, as T increases from alpha to uh, beta. Yeah, so here's a bit messy, but I'll, I'll draw that again with including the t parameters, alpha and beta. And what we have is if we draw that curve again, or a similar curve x, y, so we have it something like this. And then we have from here, if this is our A, this is our B. So then we have a, a T parameter. Let's say it starts off at alpha, and then it goes uh, ends up at this point at T is equal to beta. What this means is that the A value right here, A, is equal to, well, this is just, because uh, number A is equal to uh, X. And it's a function of uh, f, so we could write, well, this is just x of alpha, where the parameter t is alpha, which is, again, the same thing as writing f of alpha. And then going all the way to the right side, x equals to b, where, again, x is, this is a function of t. In parametric form, x is a function of, well, in this case, the parameter t is uh, beta. And this, again, equals to f of beta. So we'll include this because we're going to use this uh, soon. So now, now what we can do is, well, we can substitute the derivative uh, with the parametric form and uh, recall the parametric uh, uh, form for the derivative dy over dx, as explained in my earlier video on parametric calculus. So check that out. Put that in the link below as well. So what, what we do, if we uh, put that derivative in that parametric form into the arc length formula above, then use substitution rule for 
definite integrals to obtain and I'll show you what we'll obtain. So basically we're gonna uh, change this dy over dx with the parametric form. And before I get to that, let's just write the uh, arc length formula again. So L is equal to the integral A to B of square root one plus, now we have a dy over dt, or oh, not dy over, that's, that's soon. This is d, dy over dx, like that, squared. Yeah, I was jumping to conclusions too fast. And then we have dx like that. So now the idea is to convert all of these. We, we need to get rid of dy over dx, this dx, and these a's and b's. Uh, the reason is because we want to get rid of it and then deal with only the parameter t, or the derivative of y and x in terms of the parameter t. So what we'll do next is, well, recall, recall from my earlier video that dy over dx in parametric form is equal to dy over dt all over dx over dt. And I have the proof for this in the video link below. Let's check that out. So we have this. So then we can, well, take uh, take this over here. And again, dx over dt can equal to zero, but we already imposed that it's greater than zero. So we throw this inside there. So we get rid of this, and now we have it in terms of t, in terms of derivatives uh, that are uh, derivatives of t as opposed to x. And then the next step is, well, get rid of, rid of this uh, dx. And we know that, let me make this a bit closer. And we know, well, x is just f of t like that, and then we could, yeah, we could solve for or change dx in terms of dt uh, in multiple ways. So here, this is x is equal to f of t. If we take the derivative dx over dt is the same thing as writing f prime of t. We can move this dt on the other side. So what we end up getting is dx equals two, f prime of t dt, where f prime of t is just, well, equal to the left side, which is dx over dt. So then this just means dx is equal to dx over dt times dt. And this is just circular reasoning. We could have just multiplied dx by, well, dt over dt, so nothing changes. And the reason we're doing this is now that we have a dx over dt, uh, dx over dt, that is, well, derivative in terms of t, and then we have dt as a differential, and we could throw this inside, and yeah, that's what we want to do, change everything in terms of t. The next step is a and b. Since we're not dealing with x equals a and b, we need to convert those to t, well we already know those, at x equals to, well, a, we know that t is equal to alpha. So we have this value like that, I'll just circle that. And then at x equals to b, same thing, t is equal to, well, beta. So we change everything to t and then we could throw those inside. And finally, what we end up getting is, yeah, is L is equal to integral from, instead of A, we have beta, I mean not A, beta, alpha, up to beta, and then we change this one plus dy over dx becomes a dy over dt over dx over dt squared, then uh, all, all of it uh, square root, then times it by dx over dt, times it by dt, like that, and then what we can do right here is, well, what you do is, well, we can square this, and then square root it, so we're not changing anything, so that we could bring this inside to simplify it, because there's already a dx over dt. So what we end up getting is, well, integral, right, this bigger, uh, alpha to beta, and then uh, all the giant square root, this goes inside, so we have dx over dt squared, multiply it by one plus, and now we have here, we could square these top and bottom. So we have, yeah, what we have is a dy over dt, I'll write this a bit neater, dy over dt squared, move this over, uh, divide this by, then the bottom is dx over dt squared, like that and then put the bra square bracket, now we have a dt on the right all the way there. And now we can just multiply this inside, and then we can cancel this over here and then move this over here and replace the one. So what we finally get is a, uh, we'll simplify it all, uh, L, the arc length in parametric form is equal to integral from alpha to beta of now dx over dt squared plus d 
dy over dt squared. So it looks very, very neat, dt like that. And yeah, we could just, well, circle this whole thing. And again, where I uh, just want to point out where we had in our case, we had dx over dt is greater than zero. And also, well, y can be written as a function of x or capital F of x. So we impose these two cases here. And this is the arc length we get. And this is the end of part one yeah, of this video. And basically, even if, well, yeah, but I want to state that is even if a c can't be expressed in the form y equals capital F of x, uh, i.e. a one-to-one -one function. So if you have a, like a spiral like that, you can't write that as one-to-one -one, because if x is, uh, let's say something like this, if x is here, you're going to have, well, multiple values of, of uh, y equals fx. You can't have that. Just erase that. So, But if you had a case like that, I'll show in a later video that even if you can't express it in the form y equals capital F of, f of x, or y is a function of x, the above formula is still valid, but we obtain it by polygonal approximations. I'll go over this in my next video, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be quite interesting. Anyways, this is all for today. Hopefully you learned from this pretty uh, intensive uh, proof video for uh, the formula for arc length uh, for in parametric form, but as you can see, the non-parametric form it looks pretty similar. This is one plus dy over dx squared, and then then the other one is well, you just uh, square the it's the sum of the two derivatives of the parameters, which is quite cool. Or the x as a function of t and y as a function of d. Anyway, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned, and uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.